All right, in this lesson, we're going to be looking at the CSS pseudo element selector and a few of the tricks of the trade for working with that. So follow along and I hope you learned something. quick slides and then we'll jump right into some code and some examples. So this first slide here just introduces the concept of a CSS pseudo element. So it's just a type of selector that is a keyword that selects a specific part of your selected element. And I'll show you here in the third slide the types of pseudo elements that the browser support. But the syntax is fairly simple. So it's just a selector and then the important part here is you have these two colons next to one another and then you have the pseudo element that comes after. And again, the pseudo element, there's a predefined list of available pseudo elements that you can select. And then it's just regular old CSS. So there's a property and a value inside of your rule. So just a quick note, the double colon is the proper syntax. However, if you use a single colon, it will still work because the initial spec didn't specify. So some of the older uh, implementations of pseudo elements actually used a single colon. So typically both work, but definitely go with two because that's the proper syntax. Okay, now here's the available pseudo uh, elements that are inside of browsers. These are only the ones that are generally implemented. There's a few other experimental pseudo elements that are implemented in the certain browsers. Now in this little quick tutorial, we're just going to be looking at these four. So we're going to be looking at the after and the before, which are I think by far the most common. And then we'll look at first letter and first line, just so you can kind of see how these things work. So let's jump right into our code examples and we'll start off with these four samples. So I have here a really simple web uh, file setup. And again, you can get all these files and the slides right down in the description and the links if you want to pull these down yourself. So just to start off, just let's look at the HTML here. So there's not a lot here. There's just four paragraphs. The first paragraph you can see here just has a bunch of span tags. Each span tag has the word test. So that corresponds to this paragraph right here. And then we have three identical paragraphs that just have some lorem ipsum text and just a simple anchor tag with this class of read more here inside of the paragraph. And that's pretty much all there is to the HTML. So we're going to jump up here to the CSS and we're going to look at each one of these four that I mentioned in those slides one by one. So you can see what you do is you have your selector, so paragraph, and then the two colons, that means pseudo element. And we're gonna look first at the one called first letter. Now this is fairly self-explanatory here. So I'm just gonna uncomment this little CSS code and save. And now you can see that the first letter of every paragraph received that change. So I've selected a specific part of that element. And I just did a font weight bold and I just made those first letters bold. Now let's go ahead and look at this other one here, the first line. You can see this is gonna fairly self-explanatory too. When I update this, now the first line of every single paragraph automatically gets, you know, whatever those rules apply. Now what's kind of interesting here is it actually is the first visual line, not the first uh, sentence in a paragraph. So watch what happens if I resize this and refresh. You can see that, whoops, there is more of that first line automatically being colored and less depending on the viewport size. So it's the literal first line um, inside of the, the styling context. Okay, so that's pretty self-explanatory. That's how the pseudo elements work, but definitely the more interesting of the two are the before and after pseudo elements. So I'm gonna first show you how they were built to be intended to use and then some clever people have done some really amazing work and kind of hacked the way these work to create some unique design elements with pseudo uh, elements. So we're going to start off with this one called before. So I'm just going to quickly uncomment this and whoops and save and refresh. And you can see what this did is before every element in the paragraph, there's this property called content and you have these double quotes and anything you place inside of here, watch what happens when I save, it will automatically add that content before the first child. So if you have a paragraph, like in this example, with a bunch of children, so here's my paragraph and I have a bunch of spans, the before pseudo element essentially gets inserted right there as the first child of the paragraph. Okay, so that's where that element would be inserted and appear. 
you can see that's the case because all that content was added right there. So I'm going to delete everything and just leave the little bracket key and you can see it adds the bracket before. Now the after essentially works the exact same except the after pseudo element gets added as the last child of the container. So if I'm selecting the paragraph and I'm using the pseudo element after, essentially it's going to say, okay, what's the last child? So it's going to come all the way down to right here. That's where the this last child will be inserted. So that's where that after content would be. So when I save and refresh here, you can see now all the paragraphs have a right bracket at the end where the last child would normally appear. So that's important. So before is the first child, after is the last child. And you can really put anything you want in here. You can do dashes. You can even put uh, HTML entities to have different shapes and symbols that you can put inside of these. So that's the way the content property uh, works. Now, uh, maybe a bit more of a use case for this. Now you can see that each of my paragraphs down here, these three paragraphs have the uh, anchor tag and it says read more and typically you see like three dots, dot, 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 where you can click and go into read more. Now you don't want to come into your HTML and add three dots to the actual text. That's kind of a, it's possible, but it's a little bit muddy way of doing it. So what you can do instead is you can use the pseudo element after and add those three dots automatically. So you can see each of these class, each of these anchor tags rather have the class name of read more. So in this last example here, you can see that I'm targeting all of the child elements that have a class of read more inside of the paragraph and I'm targeting the after, after pseudo element. So let's just delete these CSS comments here and save. And you can see that automatically adds the three dots to every single anchor tag that has the class of read more that's a child of a paragraph. So that's kind of a bit more of a use case for using that content property to add things before and after the actual content. So again, your HTML stays nice and clean. There's not the dots, but visually you do see the dots. So that's kind of the purpose of that pseudo element. Now, just as a note in this last example here, I said last, this is the, the second last one. Uh, let's delete these. So in this selector here, I'm selecting everything that's a child of a paragraph. Okay, so let's save this. And all I'm doing is adding a one pixel border around that. And what I want you to note is on this very first paragraph, notice that that border is not applied to the pseudo before element nor the pseudo after element, even though they're technically the first and last child. So uh, the, the typical CSS, right, is only applied to the elements that are literal inside of your HTML code, not those pseudo elements. So that's the basics of the pseudo uh, before and after elements. Now we're going to look at some fancy tricks that people have used to actually do some cool design tricks with the before and after element next. So let's take a look at that. Okay, now in this advanced sample, we're going to be looking at the before and after selectors only. So you can see here in the CSS, I just have a single div down here in my HTML and it has the ID of test. And then I've just got three rules. I have the regular rule for the test div and then I have my before and my after pseudo element uh, selectors up there. So let's go ahead and take a look just at one interesting property here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say, uh, let's say content and I'm gonna set the content to test. This is on the before element. And I'm going to set the border to one pixel solid blue. Okay. So you can see there that that definitely has a blue border. Now, the one thing I want you to realize is that the pseudo elements are in line by default. Okay. So their display is in line by default. So essentially, I'm going to do the same thing down here. In fact, I'm going to call this one before and I'll call this one over here after. Okay, so you can kind of see how they behave. The before and after are inline elements. So what we can do is if we set the parent element, remember they behave as if they were child elements, the first and last. So if I set the parent element to have a position, oops, position of let's just say relative for now to give it a position, I can then use absolute positioning in CSS to move those elements around and change their display behavior. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set the display to block on the before and on the after. Whoops. 
And then I'm just going to squish this little uh, HTML down here because we really don't need to see that. So you can see the CSS a little bit better. You can see now those pseudo elements are behaving as uh, block level elements and I can position them. So here I can say position absolute. So I'm on the before pseudo element and I can say, I don't know, top. Let's just do 100 pixels. The height is one, 200. So top 100 pixels basically pushes that guy down about halfway. So I can position this guy wherever I want. Now I'm going to jump over and just kind of show you a, a visual representation of what you can do to sort of create almost like a 3D object where you have uh, different styling canvases. It's kind of like layers inside of a graphics program like Photoshop where you have a top layer, a bottom layer, and a middle layer. And those things can all overlap into to one graphic. Okay, so this is kind of a visual way of representing these. You can see the middle slice here, the white one, is what we, we're going to consider the root element or our div. And I can then have my before pseudo selector behave as if it sits for, in front of. And I can have my after pseudo selector behave as if it sits behind the element. And we can accomplish that with Z index. So I can set the Z index on this one to five, this one to four, and this one to six. And you can kind of see from the front, right, they just stack on top of one another. But really, they're kind of behaving as if they were sort of in this Z axis, this faux three and a half or 2.5D element. So kind of what you could do here is, remember, you're always looking at it from this point of view. But I could say apply a shadow on this front element, another shadow on this middle element, and another shadow on the back element. So it gives me three different areas that I can apply effects to with CSS. And it kind of looks like they're all being applied to a single element. So this little trick of using Z index and absolute positioning on the before and after pseudo elements is really kind of fancy for doing some cool visual effects. So I'm going to show you one of those examples just to kind of spark your interest. Then I'll show you a few kind of super advanced uh, tricks with the pseudo element and then uh, we'll be done. So let's jump back over here to the code and let's do a little quick example like this to show you what you can do. Okay, so we're going to make one little quick change here. We're just going to give this guy a margin of zero auto. Let's actually maybe give him a margin of 100 pixels auto. It's just to center this over here to, so we can see this a little bit better. And we're also going to give this div here a background color. So let's give it a background color of just some sort of uh, gray for now. So let's do, let's just say gray. OK, so that works for a minute. Let's actually come in here. And we are going to give just a quick little rule to the body tag. And we're going to give this guy a background color of gray. And we're going to give our uh, test div here a background color of actually white. So we got this little thing going. I'm going to delete this little outline, the one pixel outline. We really don't need that anymore. So we'll get rid of that. So we just have a white. Now what we're going to be doing with this uh, little advanced sample, I'm going to call this, is adding some shadows to the before and after pseudo element to automatically sort of offset any element from the background. So let's come over here to our before element. And we're going to add our first bit of code. So we're going to be using a box shadow property. So we again, we can get rid of the border here. And let's come up here and say box shadow. And this is going to be five pixels, five pixels, five pixels. And the color is going to be black. OK, so you can see what that does is it just adds a five pixel by five pixel offset, five pixels of blur, and the color is black for the shadow. So that's what the little shadow looks like but we want this guy to be positioned at a very specific point. So we're going to have the width be the same width as our, uh, actually half of our width. So we're going to say width 100. Width 100 pixels, and like so. And then we're going to position it uh, down over on the, we'll make this one the bottom left, let's say. So we're going to say uh, bottom, we'll say zero pixels. So that's going to move it down uh, from the bottom zero pixels. And we need to give this guy some dimension. So it needs to have a width and a height. Right now it doesn't have any dimensions. Uh, so let's just say, whoops, we have a width. Yeah, let's give this guy height. So we'll say height is, I don't know, uh, 25 pixels. Whoops. 
Okay, perfect. And position we have set to absolute. And whoops, I have another, I was wondering why that guy wasn't jumping down to the bottom. That's because I have this top 100 pixel rule from earlier. So we're going to delete that. And then now we have bottom zero. And you can see it adds the shadow right down there underneath uh, the corner of our, essentially of our box. Now, what we're going to do is, so that looks okay. Let's go ahead and change one of these values because I want the shadow, I want the, want it to look like the light is at the top, right? So we're going to make this value right here negative five pixels. And now the shadow is sort of sitting over here on the left edge. So that's looking great. Uh, now let's go ahead and one more time, I'm just going to add this border so you can see this. Border one pixel, solid blue again. So you can see that this guy is sitting in front of our element. And we want to push it behind here in a second. In other words, behind the white um, parent element. So before we do that, we're going to apply a uh, transform. So we're going to say transform, and we're going to use the skew command. And it's going to be 0 degrees and negative 4 degrees. So that is how far we're going to skew it. So you can see by skewing that guy, we're sort of creating this little corner shadow down here, like so. And now we're going to push it behind our element by using Z index. So we can say Z dash index. And we of course need to give our Z index to our top element as well. But let's just call this guy, I don't know, negative five for right now. And that pushes it behind this Z index right here would probably be zero by default anyway. And now we can get rid of that border. Whoops. We can get rid of the border. And you can see now we've got this element sort of tucked back behind there that has a little shadow. And now I can kind of move it up and down. So you can see it's a little too far down now that I've skewed it. So I can then take my bottom value and play around with this. So maybe I want bottom, I don't know, five pixels or something. Now I'm way zoomed in over here. So, um, you know, these values you just have to play around with. Let's go with three. That's actually pretty close. Three is probably the magic number. Yep, bottom three pixels. So I'm just watching this corner right there to where I don't really get that gray anymore. Now I've got my left shadow. Now we're going to basically copy all of this code and we're going to apply it to the after element as well. So there's all the code to the after element, except I want my after element to be on the right side. So all this is going to be the same. Um, I can delete the content. Oops, we need to delete. We want to make the content blank. I don't want to have that word in there like I did before. So just empty content. And this one's going to have the box shadow be positive five pixels. And this one is going to be on the right side. So wherever we added our um, position here, we're going to set, whoops, bottom three. And let's set this guy to right uh, zero. So it's going to be over on the right hand side. And then we need to make our skew essentially go in the opposite direction. So let's go ahead. It's going to be uh, instead of zero negative four, it's going to be zero positive four. So then it shifts down and to the right. So that's kind of what our shadow is looking like. Now, I don't want the shadow to come all the way over on the left edges either. So again, I'm just going to manually adjust this just so you can kind of see the, the idea here. So right here where I say right zero, maybe let's go right, I don't know, five pixels. Kind of push that over a hair bit. That's pretty close. I'm actually going to go a little bit more. I'm going to go eight. So it's all the way inside. And then on the other one, let's put our before. We're going to push this one over from the left, eight pixels. And there we go. So now you can see I've got that shadow all the way in there. That's looking lovely. Now, right now, it's a pretty harsh shadow. It's all the way solid black. But instead of using the 000, you can always use the RGBA alpha. So red, green, blue, alpha. So red would be zero, blue, zero, green, zero, blue, zero. And then for the alpha, you could say like 0.5, uh, which would give you 50% transparency. So you can adjust the sort of intensity of the shadow, whoops, by just switching those into RGB values. And you can see any div, I don't have to add any extra markup in my HTML. This is all done with just pure pseudo elements. So the before and the after pseudo selector, you can sort of style and add extra layers to your single elements to create some really fancy graphics. 
Now, if you don't know CSS positioning using these bottom right, position absolute, if you don't really know any of that, I've got an entire video series that covers CSS positioning in depth. So just check out that playlist and video tutorials. And let's go ahead and take a look at some more samples of just how this box, um, not the box shadow, but the pseudo element before and after can be used. So this website is called a.singlediv.com and it just showcases all the different types of graphics that are created with pure CSS and just a single HTML div. And most of these little tricks in here utilize this pseudo element trick with the before and after elements. But feel free to just view the source code and browse some of these to get some inspiration. There's some really clever tricks that are used to create some of these graphics. So we'll see you in the next one.